Hi, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of JoeyBaking.com. Today we're going to make a golden chiffon cake and this is what it looks like. This cake is light and spongy yet moist and tender. It is delicious on its own but even better when we cover it with a marshmallow frosting and some toasted coconut. So the first thing you will need to do is to preheat your oven to 325 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 165 degrees Celsius. And then you will need a 10 inch, which is 25 centimeter, two piece tube pan. This way it is. And we are not going to grease it, so don't butter it or oil it or anything. So what I like to do maybe at least a half hour before I make my batter is to separate your eggs. You will need seven large egg yolks, which would be 120 grams of egg yolks, and you will need eight large egg whites. If you go by weight, that would be 240 grams. So what I like to do is separate my eggs and then I just cover them with some plastic wrap and then we want them bring them up to room temperature because they beat a lot better when they're at room temperature. So if you have a stand mixer, use your paddle attachment for this, or you could use a hand mixer. So we're, we're going to put all our dry ingredients into our mixing bowl. So you will need two cups, 240 grams of cake flour. Now cake flour is a low gluten flour. And that will give our chiffon cake that really nice, soft and tender crumb. And then chiffon cakes are foam cakes. They belong in that same category as like a sponge cake or an angel food cake. But there is a few differences. We are going to add some baking powder, two uh, teaspoons, eight grams of baking powder. So not only do we get our rise from the beaten egg whites. We're also going to get a little help from the baking powder. And then you will need a half a teaspoon, two grams of salt. I like to use the kosher salt. It's a little milder tasting. And then one cup, 200 grams of granulated white sugar. So all that just in there. And then I'm just going to beat this on low speed just until everything gets all mixed together. Okay, simple enough. So now just kind of make a well in the center of your dry ingredients. And we are going to put in those room temperature egg yolks, along with a half a cup, 120 mils or grams of just tap water, have that at room temperature. And two teaspoons, eight grams of pure vanilla extract for flavoring. And then what's a little different, again, from like a lot of um, foam cakes, we're adding some oil. So you will need a half a cup, 120 milliliters, 120 grams of a flavorless oil. That would be like uh, corn, canola, vegetable, even safflower oil. And that's really going to give a nice moist and tender crumb. And what's great, too, with the chiffon cake, is because you've got the oil, you can put it in the fridge and it won't, the, the uh, cake won't be like a butter cake, it won't get firm. So what I'm gonna do is beat this just until we get a nice smooth batter on like medium low speed. That'll take maybe a minute. Okay, so that's, Good for that. I did stop the machine like once just to scrape the uh, bottom and the sides of the bowl. So just keep that in mind. So now that is that part of the batter. Now we need to beat our egg whites, a typical foam, like a sponge cake. So take your eight large egg whites, have them at room temperature. They will beat up a lot more if they're at room temperature. And you will need a whisk attachment for this. So I'm just going to beat my whites on low speed just until they get nice and foamy. Okay, so just let you see. So there we have 
our whites nice and foamy. So I'm going to add a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. Now you can find cream of tartar in like where all the other spices are in your uh, grocery store. And cream of tartar will help stabilize our whites and then prevent overbeating. If you cannot find cream of tartar, you could use just a half a teaspoon of lemon juice. So now what I'm going to do is put it on medium speed, continue to beat it until we get soft peaks. Okay, so we've reached soft peaks. One way you can tell besides this way where you can see it's soft peaks is you will start to see the tracks of your uh, the whisk in your uh, whites. So now we are going to put our, our uh, mixer speed to high and we are going to gradually add a bit at a time a half a cup 100 grams of granulated white sugar or if you have some super fine sugar that's good as well and you want to do it gradually put a little in you want that to kind of beat dissolve and then we're going to add a little more and a little more and we're going to keep beating until we have nice shiny stiff peaks <laughs> are done. Essentially we have a meringue. So this is what you're looking for. Wonderfully glossy, stiff. And then a test. Take a little between your fingers and rub it. There should be no, it shouldn't be gritty. You want to make sure all that sugar has dissolved. If when you do that there's still a little bit of grittiness, then beat it just a little more. So now I have put the batter in a wide pan so you can really see what I'm doing and it makes it easier to because we've got to fold our meringue into our batter. Now you don't do it all at once. We do it in stages. So just take some and then with a spatula or you could use a whisk, just big strokes. Because you want to mix it in, but you don't want to, to deflate your meringue. Because that's what's going to give us, besides the baking powder, that's what's going to give that wonderfully light, airy texture to our chiffon. So once you get it to about that point, then we'll add a little more. It's going to cut through up and over. think of a chiffon cake as kind of a cross between like a butter cake and like a sponge cake. It seems to me it has the, both, the best of both. Okay. And as you can see, it's, it's good to have a really big wide bowl for this if you have it. I know it means another bowl to wash, but it does make it easier. You want to make sure, get to the bottom because you want to make sure you've lightened all of that batter. And, oh, gorgeous. Looks good. I got it all. Mixed in, just a little more there. I'm going to get to the bottom of the, there. Okay, so now we are going to pour it into our tube pan. Now the reason we didn't oil our pan or grease it is because as the batter ba uh, bakes, it's going to rise and we want it to cling to the sides of the pan. Be 
because we have to turn this cake, once it's baked, we have to turn it upside down. And if we grease the pan and we turned it upside down, it would just fall out. And the reason we turn it upside down is so it doesn't shrink as it cools. Kind of a clever way of preventing it from deflating. Okay. So I'm just going to smooth that out as best as I can. And then what I like to do, just to get rid of any air bubbles, sometimes I just kind of, or you could just take a knife or a skewer and just run it through. And we can get rid of any air bubbles that might be in there. So to bake this, everyone's oven is a little different. I find around the 55 minutes, 55, maybe 60. It will rise, it will turn a beautiful golden brown, and uh, like you probably want a long skewer, put it in the center, will come out clean. So you just watch it, you know, after about 50 minutes, you don't want to overdo it, make it dry. So 55, 60 minutes. So our chiffon cake is done. Isn't that gorgeous? So now what we want to do, oh, just yeah, if you put a long skewer into the center, it will come out clean. So now what we want to do right away is to take, I got a cup here, turn it upside down, and then we're going to turn our cake upside down, put the center core onto that. So, you want to have it a little above your counter to get the air circulating. And like I said, we turned it upside down so that it won't shrink during cooling. Now, this will take, depending on how cold your kitchen is, somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half. You want that to cool completely. But meanwhile, while that's happening, we're going to put some toasted coconut on top of our frosting. So you will need two cups, which is 150 grams. I'm using a, I like the flaked, and I'm using sweetened dried coconut. You could use the unsweetened as well. And so the oven is on, so I might as well do it now. So this will take, you want to bake this until it's nice and golden brown. That's about, say, 10 to 15 minutes. Every once in a while, stir it for even baking, and towards the end, really watch it because once it starts browning, it can burn very easily. So you want it nice and golden brown, say 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so our coconut is done. As you can see, nice golden brown. So I'm just gonna let that cool. I'm gonna let my cake finish cooling, and when we come back, I will show you how to take it out of the pan. So our cake has completely cooled, so we are now ready to take it out of the pan. You will need a wire rack. I'm just going to lightly butter that. You could also just use oil or one of those nonstick sprays because we don't want our cake sticking to the rack. And then I'm going to take just a spatula. You could use a knife and run it on the inside. And then you also want to take, I'm using a smaller one, around the inside core here. And then just flip it, kind of push down. Now, this is very normal part of the outside crust is 
attached to the pan. And then what I'm going to do is take my spatula and just run it in the bottom here. should slide out. Okay, so that is our cake. I'm just going to let that it's cool while we make our marshmallow frosting. Marshmallow frosting is really a Swiss meringue. Very similar, kind of similar. I, I think it's a little easier to make than a seven minute frosting. You will need a saucepan of simmering water and then in a heat proof bowl, I prefer uh, stainless steel. You will need four large egg whites, which is 120 grams. Let's put it right in there. Along with a half a cup, 100 grams of granulated white sugar, and a half a teaspoon of cream of tartar. And then just take a wire whisk, and we're going to whisk all that together. Next, we're going to put it over our simmering water. We're going to heat this up to we're going to that will dissolve the sugar plus we want it to get we want to heat the mixture and then it will beat really nicely we're going to take it up to it's going to be hot to the touch and just side note here keep stirring it at all times you don't want your eggs to sit over water because simmering water because they will cook and we don't want to have scrambled eggs. So what we're going to do is take this up actually to 160 degrees Fahrenheit, which is 71 degrees um, Celsius. And the reason we're going to take it up to that temperature is that uh, kills any salmonella, so you don't, there's no risk at that temperature. So you will need either you could use a, a mercury thermometer or a digital. So it's going to be really hot to the touch, but I would recommend, you know, either some kind of thermometer and just keep stirring the whole time. Okay, so we are at the temperature. Take it off the heat. And I'm going to make sure I have no water on the bottom of my bowl. And I'm going to put it into my mixing bowl and I'll clean up and we'll be right back to whip up our meringue. So if you're using a stand mixer, use your whisk attachment or you could just use a hand mixer for this. I'm going to beat this starting on, on low speed and going to high until it becomes like a meringue. Nice and shiny and fluffy. it take a few minutes. Okay, we are done. Well, almost done. As you can see, nice, stiff, glossy. So I am going to flavor it with a half a teaspoon, two grams of pure vanilla extract. Just beat that in. Okay. Like I said, this is called a marshmallow frosting or a Swiss meringue. You can actually put this on a lemon meringue pie. It's that stable. You don't have to bake it because we did heat those uh, whites up to the correct temperature. So now we have our chiffon cake. Now a lot of times you have like little bits of the crust be, uh, like loose. So what I do is I go around to get rid of those and just rub my hand. Now, if you want to spend a lot of time, you can get rid of all of that crust if you don't like it. I actually do, so. And like I said, this cake is excellent on its own. You do not have to frost it. It's really nice with, you know, just on its own or with some whipped cream and fresh berries. So now I've got a, uh, a turntable. I am using a cake round. You don't have to. You could just put this right onto your serving 
flatter if you want, but I'm going to put it right to that. And a lot of crumbs. Scrape that up. Okay. So there we have our cake and we have our frosting done. So I'm just going to pile it on here and frost the top and the sides. So what I do is I pile it on the top and then I just take, you can just take a, the back of a spoon or a knife, I got a, a, off, or a straight edge spatula here, and just work your way down. Okay, so that looks good. Now, you could just leave it like this. I think it looks beautiful. You could actually take uh, your uh, butane torch and you could brown your uh, marshmallow frosting if you'd like to do that. But today I'm going to, uh, you know, that toasted coconut we did before, I'm going to decorate it with that. Other ideas would be like maybe some toasted and sliced almonds. So I can just as much or as little as you want. And then I've got to take this, lift this up, and I'm going to kind of just put it around the sides. Carefully. I don't want my cake falling off. Okay. So that looks good. And then you could just go around and brush that all off. But So the thing is with this type of frosting, it doesn't actually hold very well at room temperature. It starts to, after a while, it, like after the first day, if you stored it at room temperature, it starts to get a little grainy. But if you cover and put it into the refrigerator, I find it'll hold for quite a few days. Otherwise, you know, like I said, if you have it at room temperature, it still tastes good, but it will get a little bit of graininess. So I do recommend storing it in the refrigerator. To cut this, I find a serrated knife is the best. Because it is kind of really spongy cake. So I use a sawing motion. I can get this. Oop. Oh, knife. Okay, I did take a big piece there. <laughs> the frosting, so good. Doesn't that look wonderful? Nice and spongy, very light. And then I like the look of it, the, the, the golden chiffon cake with the nice white icing, marshmallowy. Gotta have the frosting. Chiffon cakes are so good. <laughs> the oil makes, uh, helps to give you a really nice moist cake. But with, the, with both the, egg, uh, the whites, the beaten whites, plus a little baking powder, you get a very light, you get, it's spongy, it's airy, it's wonderful taste to it. And then that marshmallow frosting, I think, really finishes it off nice. And then the toasted coconut. So try this one. And until next time, I'm Stephanie Jaworski of joybaking.com.